is on Lewis structures. So a Lewis structure is a way to see what the actual atom and molecule, the atoms together to make the molecule, are going to look like. And to do this, there's a couple steps that we follow. So you want to write these down, uh, the steps, probably over on the right-hand side of your paper here, and then we'll do the examples on the left-hand side. So the first step we want to do is count our number of valence electrons. So that's the number of electrons that are in the outermost shell. And if we exclude our transition metals and we number our groups going across, it's equal to the number of the groups. So something's in group 5, it has 5 valence electrons. If there's a charge given on our molecules, like in this example here, if it's a negative charge, it means we have an extra electron. A positive charge means we have one less electron. After that, we go ahead and we make the skeleton, which is where we're going to arrange our atoms in their relative location. The first element that's given to us is going to go in the middle. Uh, this kind of helps. This is the protocol that we follow so that we can arrange them accordingly. After we go ahead and make our skeleton, we're going to fill everybody's octets. We know that the octet rule states that every element wants to have uh, eight electrons. They want to be like the noble gases. There's two exceptions to that rule. One is hydrogen. He only wants two electrons. And boron only wants six. After we filled everybody's octets, we're going to go ahead and count the number of electrons that we have, knowing that if we have a bond between them that's sharing electrons, and we'll get into that in a minute. If there are too many electrons that we count, we're going to take a pair, take a pair, and make them share. And if there's too few electrons, we're going to add electrons to our central atom for an expanded octet, if necessary. So these rules will make a little bit more sense as we go through some examples. So example number one, I have PBr2, or phosphorus dibromide. So the first thing I want to do is count my valence electrons. So I like to write them in a column with phosphorus and then bromine. Now phosphorus is in group 5, so it's going to have 5 valence electrons. Bromine is in group 7, so it has 7 valence electrons, and I have 2 of them, so I multiply that by 2. It gives me 14. And then I go ahead... This should say PBr3. There we go. So 7 times 3 is 21. So 21 plus 5 is 26. Total electrons is the number of electrons I have to work with. So that's step 1, my valence electrons. I don't have a charge, so I don't have to worry about that. Step 2, I make my skeleton. So I put step 2 here. Now, like I said, I put my element in the middle. Um, this is the first element that I have, so my phosphorus is going to go in the middle. And then I'm going to put my three bromines coming off of that. So bromine here, here, and here. Now I know they're linked together by at least one shared pair of electrons, because they're all going to be covalent bonds. So I have one pair of electrons here. This again, are, these are representing my single bonds. I can have double bonds and triple bonds, and we'll get into those as they come. So I go ahead and I've made my skeleton, and now I need to fill everybody's octets. Everybody wants eight electrons. So I'm going to start with bromine. It has two electrons here. And I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like I was drawing its Lewis structure. Bromine again has two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Again, two here, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And phosphorus has two, four, six, so it means two more, seven, and eight. Now I go ahead then and I count my number of electrons that I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and this bonded pair is seven and eight, because there's two electrons, think one on either end. Then again here I have, so that was eight, I have nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 3, 24, 25, and 26. So after I've counted my electrons, that's step 2 and then 3. So I have 26 electrons, and I look back to see how many electrons I could have. That's 26, so they match. So I'm happy, and everybody's good. So that's the Lewis structure of PBr3. So then I go on, my next example, I have N2H2, so dinitrogen dihydride. So again, I start by first counting my valence electrons. Nitrogen, I look at my periodic table, and that again is in group 5, so it has 5 electrons. 
I have two nitrogens, so I need to multiply that times two, which gives me ten electrons from that nitrogen. And then I have my hydrogen, hydrogen's in group one. I have two of them, so that's two. Two total electrons from hydrogen, so I add them together, and I have twelve electrons to play with. Step two, I make my skeleton. Now my first element goes in the middle. I'm going to put both these nitrogens in the middle. One here, bonded to the other one. And my two hydrogens, I'm going to start evenly putting them on both sides. So I put a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. Okay. Then I go ahead and I fill in all my octets. Now hydrogen wants two electrons and it has two from this bond here, and this hydrogen also has two here. My nitrogen here has one, two, three, four, so it needs two more. One, two, three, four. Then this nitrogen here has one, two, three, four, so it needs four more. Five, six, seven, and eight. So now everybody's valence electrons and, out, or, and their octets are filled. So I go ahead then and I count my electrons. Well, my hydrogen has one, two, and then I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have fourteen electrons here. Okay? I look back and I say, oh no, I only need twelve. Sad face. So what I do, if I have too many electrons, I take a pair, take a pair, and make them share. So watch as I do this. I take a pair from one atom, I take a pair from another atom, and I make them share. So now instead of having these four electrons, I say, I can't have those four electrons, I can only have two, so I make them share two electrons. So then I rewrite my atom. I have my hydrogen connected to my nitrogen, and now these two nitrogens, instead of having two lone pairs on the top, they now have another bond here, now bonded to my hydrogen, and I still have my two lone pairs down here like this. So then I go ahead and I count again. Two in here, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve electrons, that's what I'm supposed to have, so I'm happy. So this here is a double bond. I My two nitrogens now are sharing four total electrons. Think of one electron on either side of this bond that's being shared back and forth between the two of them. Example number three, I have my nitrite ion here, my NO2. So nitrogen is in group five, I have one of them. Oxygen is in group six, I have two of those. And then I can't forget about my charge, because Mary says include those charges. Now if I have a negative one charge, it means that I have one more electron, so I have to incorporate that when I'm counting my number of electrons. So negative one here tells me I have one more. So when I add them up, I have five plus 12, which is 17, and one more is 18. So I have 18 total electrons to play with. Next step, I go ahead and I make my skeleton. I put my first element in the middle, so my nitrogen goes in the middle. And then I go ahead and I put my oxygens around it. So I put one on either side, so it's balanced. After I made my skeleton, I fill my octets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And oxygen is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So everybody's octets are full. And I go ahead and then I count my number of electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty electrons. I look back, well, I can only have eighteen. I can't use all 20. It means they don't really exist. I have too many here. So I go back and I say I have too many, so I'm going to take a pair, take a pair, and make them share. I like to go from the top. So I take a pair, take a pair, make them share. And these are always going to be on your central atom. And so I'm going to go again, and I have my oxygen, and I have bonded to this nitrogen. This has to stay the same. Now between this nitrogen and oxygen, they now have a double bond here. And when there's a double bond, the electrons that are outside of it are going to go in kind of no longer across and down, but they're going to be off to the side like this. 
So here, and then this oxygen over here still has its six valence electrons. Nitrogen has its two here. So go ahead and I count again. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. So I have eighteen electrons now. I look back and say, yay, that's what I wanted. And there's one more step now. Since I had a charge here, I need to again let my audience know that I have a charge on my molecule as well. So I put brackets around it, like this. And I just write negative 1 off to the side. So that way I know that I had to add an electron in order to make this molecule happen. Okay. The other examples on your sheet I'd like you to try, and we're also going to go over those in class tomorrow. So just to talk about those co uh, covalent bonds that you have that we can run into, a couple of different types. We have the single bond, which is where you just have our A to B with one line in between. Here they're sharing two electrons. This is going to be your longest and weakest bond. The next one we have is our double bonds, which is where we have where I've taken a pair and taken a pair and made them share. So we have a double bond here. They share four electrons, so like one electron on either side. This is kind of middle strength. Um, not the weakest, not the strongest. Then we have our third type, which is where we have our triple bond. They're going to share six electrons. It's going to be the shortest and strongest. And so I, only, I started with a single bond, then I took a pair and took a pair and made them share, so now I had a double bond. And then the pair of electrons down here as well, I took a pair and took a pair and made them share. So that's a triple bond, it's your shortest and strongest bond. So there are three different types we can have. You can't have a, a quadruple bond, they don't exist. So then we have diatomics, and we've talked about them briefly for a minute before. But these are some elements that are most stable when they're actually bonded together. So there's a special set of seven of them. I refer to them as Brinkelhoff, which is bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So an example of this would be like fluorine, which is F2 in its diatomic state, where my one fluorine is bonded to the other one with their valence electrons are round, and their um, octets are now satisfied. So whenever you see any one of these diatomics, so any one of these bromines would now be Br2, iodine is I2, nitrogen is N2, chlorine is Cl2, hydrogen is H2, oxygen is O2, fluorine is F2. So whenever you now see oxygen, you're going to write it as O2 because that's how it really is in nature. We don't just have free-floating single atom oxygens in our air that we breathe. It's O2. Um, same as with nitrogen in the air we breathe is N2. It's not just N. So when these come up on different problems and whatnot, you're going to have to remember your diatomics, which is your Brinkelhoff uh, atoms and molecules.